We've talked a lot about Prusa Slicer for FDM, but you have to remember Prusa has the SL1. Let's get into resin slicing. Let's have some fun. Hey, thanks for joining us. And I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say it at least once in the video, resin is toxic. But we're not here to talk about that. We did a whole video about the resin before. You can card to it there if you want to go take a look. Because remember, resin is toxic. Resin is toxic. Resin is toxic. I love messing with the editors. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> but Prusa has support for resin printers. And yes, it is technically just the SL1 and the SL1S. But if you ask me nicely down in those comments, maybe I'll show you how to get it to work for other machines. Some of which we talked about right up there in that card for resin printers. Oh yeah, leave a like, come on. We're doing more cool stuff in Prusa Slicer. You love Prusa Slicer. I love Prusa Slicer, so should you. Let's talk about Prusa Slicer because Prusa Slicer may not be Preform. Preform is the slicer software designed for Formlabs printers, but when you remember that a Prusa SL1 is less than half the price and has better community support, eh. But yeah, let's talk about it. Let's end. All right, we'll do a Benchy. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Benchy is huge on an SL1 build platform because unfortunately the SL1 and the SL1S not all that big. The SL1S is larger. It's actually like 30% larger or something like that. Uh, but the SL1 is the same size as your Elegoo Mars and some of your smaller cheap resin 3D printers. So this kind of gives you an idea of how big the Benchy is or more importantly, how small these printers are, but don't let their measly size fool you. There's a lot of power in here. And you know what, whether you like them or not, this is not to get political. This is actually to show you a really cool model by Chelsea of Chaos Cortec, the seated Bernie model, even down to the little shoelaces. Look at that. And this is what you can fit on one of these smaller resin printers. Uh, we'll link to that file in the description too, so you guys can check it out. It's actually a pretty cool file. Resin is not like FDM. You cannot print this as it stands, not without support. It won't work. Resin does not do overhangs, like just at all. Now there are some cases where it can, but in general, resin doesn't do a lot. And remember, the resin part is actually printing like this. So it does start here, but it pulls out of the resin. And really your big thing when you're dealing with resin printers is to reduce your cross-sectional area. Now, if you're using Chi2Box, which get subscribed, we're gonna have a video all about Chi2Box and probably a few of them because Chi2Box, there's a lot to take in from Chi2Box, uh, but that will be coming soon. That is the slicer that a lot of you with the cheap resin printers are used to using until you've learned our one little trick, we'll go through it eventually, but just leave me a comment, leave the video a like if you wanna know. There is a lot possible inside of Prusa Slicer, especially when you look at the fact that you can do some pretty cool stuff. And don't worry, we will show it to you. Just make sure you leave a comment and let me know that you do wanna see it. Because if you already know how to do it, great, let me know in the comments. There are some tricks to making this work, but it is pretty awesome. You know what else is awesome? My segue to our sponsor. 3D Musketeers, yeah, we're gonna keep self-sponsoring these because we freaking can. We at 3D Musketeers are here to take your ideas from art to part, whether you want a big resin benchy, you want a seated Sanders, or you're looking for something a little bit more cool, like a recent time-lapse part that we did, a planetary phone stand made by the awesome Clock Spring 3D. Uh, we'll card to the uh, video, have it on screen here, but we'll card to it there so you guys can take a look at it. We can help you out at 3D Musketeers, full head-to-hands, art-to-part, rapid prototyping, and product development, utilizing some awesome machinery. Anyways, 
let's get into this a little bit further. So we've got our model. And as I said before, we want to reduce our cross-sectional area because ultimately the cross-sectional area will determine the amount of peel force. Let me get my spare resin tank and let's talk about peel forces. And then I get to have the cool reverb. <laughs> it's like half the reason why I have spare resin tanks laying around. This is a clean tank, like literally still has the initial protective layer on it. When your part is being pulled out of the vat, it has to detach from this FEP film. There are some tricks to make this better. Let me know in the comments if you wanna know about these. You can coat your vat with special material that will enable your parts to come off way easier, sometimes enabling you to print faster, which is really important if, you know, you value your time. But because you are pulling stuff out every single layer, if you can reduce that cross-sectional area, well, you effectively kind of solve a problem in resin printing. And Prusa Slicer does this pretty amazingly. Prusa Slicer is one of the few resin slicers out there that is free and enables you to do this. You can right click, you can do optimize orientation. Now Prusa Slicer is going to look at optimizing the orientation, not for print time, but for print quality. Now I liked their old iteration of this. I'm not a huge fan of the new one because if you look, you're basically touching this entire surface at once. And normally, again, you want to reduce your cross-sectional area. This is not reducing it. So now we're gonna go ahead and generate supports. Let's make sure that we're on a reasonable thing. We're gonna go to 0 0.05 normal. Uh, and let's just grab a random Prusa ABS like clear. Fine, go to our supports, auto-generate. It takes a little bit of time, it's fine. You can see it was thinking down there. And now we have our supports. But I wanna show you how I would do this because I don't think that Prusa Slicer does a great job at audio orienting your parts because, well, you've got a big flat surface right here that is only supported at like two or three points. So let's go over to a new window. So this is our second uh, benching model. I'm gonna do all of this manually. So I'm going to basically flip it around like that. And I'm going to take it off kilter because again, we want to reduce our cross-sectional area. Mine will ultimately result in more support. Um, quite frankly, I can cheat. I'm just gonna do optimize orientation. So now that we have it auto-oriented, I'm going to make a bit, just a slight, slight adjustment. I'm going to tilt it about 15 degrees, okay? That again is going to result in more support, but you're gonna see inside of my support settings, we have a little bit of extra support. We also, we add a pad wall. You're gonna see what that looks like comparatively. Um, but let's go ahead. I'm gonna change it from the Soraya Tech Fast to the exact same material, which is the Prusa Clear ABS-like we will slice it. This one should take a lot longer. I think there's a lot more support going on this model. And as you can tell, there'd be a lot left over. So we look here, we're about 20 milliliters used versus 1772. You are 0.04 millimeters off of being American. There's a big difference. Like, and let me be very clear here. Three milliliters at the end of the day for a print that is much, much higher chance of success is worth every penny. You look at your average cost of resin, it's like 40 bucks a liter. Three milliliters is, it's literally four cents per milliliter. So if you're telling me that you wouldn't spend an extra quarter worth of cost to have a higher guarantee that your prints are going to succeed, man, I, I don't know what to tell you. There's a level of cheap that I just can't get to. So if we look, we are really supporting this entire bridge because it needs it. It legitimately needs it. And we can look, we can come all the way down here and see it needs all that support. Now I could probably push my points to being half a millimeter away. And you know what, let's do that really quickly. 
Hey, I can do that right here. 0 0.5. All right, now we can auto generate the support so you guys can see it. So now we look at it and the part still has quite a bit of support there, but it is quite literally half of what it used to have. Oddly, we're using more material, barely, but again, I, small little bits of extra money here and there. Yes, they will add up over time, but if I don't have to print something three or four times to get it right, it makes total sense. So let's go back to the original Prusa one. So this is the original one that they did. Let's say we wanted to add more support. This is what I love about Prusa Slicer is that, okay, maybe I like what they've done, but I know this thing needs way more support all over. I can just come in here and I can click. Let's say I don't agree with where that one's placed. I can click on it. I can move it. I can click away from it and it's there. If I don't like that one, I want it to go away. I can click it, click delete, and now it's gone. Okay. And now we apply changes. It's going to re-slice all the support. Now you're going to see we've got more along the bottom or the top, but the bottom. There's something to keep note for that, right? I could come in here and say, all right, let's look at manual edit. Do we really need all of these? Eh, probably not. We can probably get away with going to every other one of them, especially if you have a printer that's really well tuned. You can get away with that. We apply those changes and we'll see it reslice. There you go. Less support there. This gives you full finite control of where you put your points along with all the little bits about it. Let's go back to ours. Let's take a look at it again. We have a ton of support here. We can go ahead and even when you're in here, you can do your clipping view, which will allow you to look inside of the model. You can continue to clip it just a little bit further. And let's say, all right, we can see that this wheel is going to be an overhang. So we might want to add a few more supports all around this thing to make sure it doesn't fall. It's not unreasonable apply those changes. Everything's going to reslice and do its happy dance. We'll reset the direction, which will then enable us to look at it from a different direction. I do like the clipping view. And of course, when you get out of your support setting over here, it's totally fine. Now we do have the ability to hollow. First though, we will need to fix this model. It is going to force us to redo the supports, but the Benchy has some issues and if you try to hollow a model with issues prusa slicer tends to freak out we want to hollow this model let's hollow it to like i don't know two millimeters two millimeters is fine we can now also drill our holes a four millimeter diameter hole will be just fine so we can look at adding whatever diameter and whatever depth we want i prefer to have a, a, something that's a little bit deeper than stock um, that way you know that you're actually getting through the surface you're trying to get through. But be careful on smaller models because it may not work. Um, so let's just put one right here. Another one a little bit lower. Let's put them right about there. And uh, we'll put one up at the front of the bow. Right about there ought to be all right. Cool. That should enable us to drain resin out. Let's preview and the model here it's going to go ahead and hollow the inside and drill some holes for us and yes we will have to do new supports oh well we saw this model was about 20 milliliters to begin with now we can see we've got our holes drilled into it we can see into the interior of the model which is what we needed to see yeah it's good enough they're in there uh and it should be all right but now if we go ahead and go back to our support points, we'll take a look and see what they have to say. Now realize the Benchy is not the greatest model to hollow out. There's not a lot of areas for it to be hollow. If we go ahead and slice, we can see previously it was 20 milliliters on the money. Let's see what it comes out to now, 14.64. So not only are you using less material? You've got more supports. Now this model's gonna be pretty ugly. And if we look, I'm guessing there's gonna be some internal support, but maybe not a ton. Yeah, some. 
But we got lots of good areas. And you'll see, it only really hollowed the areas that could be hollowed. If you went to thinner, it would go thinner. But the Benji's not a great model to hollow out anyways. Just really to show you guys the capabilities of it. Um, now you have better supports. More of them. A better pad. Because if you look, our pad has a brim around it. That, again, helps with... Uh, the suction forces that you deal with on these really flat pads that just go from very flat to the cones. I don't like this. Form Labs does their similar to this, and my theory has always been there is a reason for it. What that reason is beats me. But they clearly know what they're doing because preform software, which is what Form Labs uses, is phenomenal. We would show it to you guys, but it is so specific to Form Labs printers that I don't really know if it warrants a video. If it does, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. And I'll give you guys a bit of a hint. You can export the plate as an STL, including supports. And that gets you what you'd want. Now, there's a little bit more to it to check your models and everything. But this really kind of gets you started. And if you have a Prusa printer, dude, Prusa Slicer is probably one of the greatest slicers out there for resin. There are some others, which we will be covering very soon. So make sure you get subscribed for that. But I mean, gosh, Prusa Slicer is great for FDM. It's pretty good for SLA. There is some still on the table for me. Um, I think that its new algorithm for placing the model is not great. I want to see it tilted more like this, especially when you're dealing with minis. It tends not to tilt them the way that really makes the most sense to me. But then again, I have to believe that the computer program is smarter than me. Right, Victoria? She's taking a bath, splish, splash, and stuff. But yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. I would love to get your opinions on all of this. There's a lot to unpack with this, and I think a lot of it just involves you downloading the software, enjoying it. To me, this is very much like a B plus, B minus. There's a lot of room to improve. It's clearly made for Prusa printers. You can kind of finagle it to use others, especially if you just create your own build plates for your bigger resin printers. That's the size of an Elegoo Saturn, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to show you what the Benchy looks like on a Saturn. But you can do this. That's just really more for quoting for us. But there you go. Uh, oh yeah, and when you move it off the build plate, all your supports go away. So don't do that. Uh, and I believe also when you turn it off, the supports go away. Let's find out. Yep, when you hide it, the supports go away. Which is like, why? Why? If I move it off the build plate, leave my supports. And if I hide it, leave my supports. I don't know if Prusa does this for their FDM models. I presume they do, but you don't get to see FDM supports before you slice where you do for, uh, for resin. I do like it. I think the SL1 is a great printer. But yeah, guys, let me know down in the comments. What do you think of this? Again, very 30,000 foot level. If you want me to deep dive into things like setting up materials, tuning your times for layer heights and things, we can do all of that. I just need your feedback because I don't want to make videos for no dang reason. Uh, it's clear that when we do videos on like Prusa Slicer and Cura, you guys love it. But some of the more obscure slicers are, I don't know, kind of forgotten about anyways i hope you all enjoyed this one stay safe out there don't forget to call your loved ones as always keep making awesome have a good one and oh yeah pet your cats more for every like this cat gets more pets <laughs> take care five simple resin tricks that keep you from having to use crappy softwares Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this one about Prusa Slicer, maybe you'll want to check out the other videos we have on Prusa Slicer right below me. Don't forget, Patreon is coming soon. Your name could be over here. And we do have one more video for you all about resin 3D printing. So make sure you guys get subscribed, and I will see you down in the comments. Take care.